and welcome back to shop. So today, what we're going to do is we're going to start on our series of building that little gear hopper from the casting kit that I bought. Now, this gear hopper is relatively small. We'll, I'll show you the castings here in a second. And it's capable of doing gears to about four, four and a half inch diameter, somewhere in that general neighborhood. Uh, my idea of getting it was to make some gears for my lathes here and maybe sell some eventually down the line once I get this sucker up and running. We'll see. It uses change gears from the, the the salt bend that I have and Atlas lathes, you know, any kind of change gear lathe, it's built to use those change gears to calculate your pitches. Now this is a derivation of the Jacobs design, which from my research was in a few articles in Model Engineers Workshop in about the mid-70s. So if Nobody knows, Model Engineers Workshop is a UK based magazine, uh, very similar to, should I go one up here, <coughs> to Machinist Workshop, kind of like Home Shop magazine, different projects, things like that. So this is a der derivation of that with some modifications in it, as far as I can tell. Now I bought the set from Martin Model here in the US. It's everything, all the information is down in the link. I bought the full kit, which is the casting kit, and also the plans. You can buy a piecemeal if you want. You can buy just the plans. He sells everything. Now, since he sells these plans, I cannot show them to you. Uh, I will show you a couple of things just to show you how they're written and how they look. But as far as, as, far as being able to show these on camera and things like that, I can't do that since he sells them. These are his plans, not from a magazine or anything like that so I cannot show it to you and don't ask me to make copies of them for you because I won't so you can buy as much of this kit or as little of this kit as you want I think as it stands right now I have it on my phone as it stands of March 28th 2021 this kit will run you $495 plus shipping now, I bought this myself. I have zero affiliation with Martin Model. I have zero affiliation with anybody involved in selling these castings, in building these castings, or anybody that wrote these plans. So, this is my opinion of it, what the castings look like and me just building it up from what they give you. Okay? So, before we go and look at these castings, I just want to let you know how this series of videos is going to be formatted. So each individual video is going to be on one part of the machine. So one casting machine from beginning to end. There are a few parts that you make without castings like the spindles and things like that. But in other words, each part will just be its own individual video and then probably the last one will be assembly or something like that. So that way there, if you do buy these castings, you can refer to these videos for each individual part and see how I did it. Now, I'm not going to go in order. All right, I'm going to probably do the easiest things first, save the hardest for last. So it's not going to be in order of the drawings. And again, all you get is the drawings. You do not get any instructions. You just get a set of measurements to what to put the parts to. As far as equipment goes, you can probably get away with doing this on a small lathe and a decently sized milling machine. Something along the lines of what Double Boost has, uh, what John has, one of those uh, smaller column mills or something like that. I don't think you'll be able to, I, I can't confirm nor deny that it'll fit on a mini mill. I don't know. I'm gonna be using the Bridgeport and the 13 inch lathe. Now my nine inch lathe will not swing something like this, but my 13 inch lathe will. But as long as you have boring capabilities on your mill, you should be okay. There are certain things that are gonna require a lathe no matter what, because there are certain bushings and things like that that need to be turned down to certain sizes. So you are gonna need some sort of lathe. So why don't we go and take a peek at what these castings look like and what you get in the package. Okay, for your $495, this is what you get. 
So everything, most of the main assemblies are here. So your base, all your little cross slide things. This is your swivel base. These will hold the gears to give you your ratios. And one of these is going to be a works work uh, spindle, a work holding spindle will hold the piece being cut. The other one will hold the gear, the actual physical gear hub. A couple gear banjos. Couple other little clampy type things, not exactly sure where those go at the moment yet. And then these guys here, which will end up going somewhere. As far as castings go, no voids. Uh, finish on them looks really good, and you can see here. Okay, and you can see each one is numbered, and that corresponds to the plan. So in the actual drawings, Drawing GH9 is this piece here and how to machine it. As far as, like I said, as far as the castings go, you have a little bit of cleanup on the potting lines. What's weird is like some of them, you can see somebody has been grinding at that one and some of them don't have that cleanup. But not a big thing, just with either a grinding wheel or a belt sander, just kind of get that flash off, not a huge thing. As far as the castings go, no real flaws in them. The only issue that I saw is on this one here. I don't know if you can see. It looked like they're off a little bit on the parting area. You can see the kind of the gap there. It's not a huge thing. It's just like a clamping bolt that goes through here once this gets split. But besides that, that's the only real flaw I can get. As far as any voids or anything, it doesn't look like any sink marks in any of them. So we should be okay. All right, just so I want to let you guys know what you're getting into, uh, this is the one and only time I'm gonna show any of these plans, and I'm only gonna show a few just to illustrate a point. And so you're gonna get a list like this that has all the drawings, and you're gonna get part call-out numbers here for McMaster Car and some other places for parts you're gonna need to purchase. So depending on if you have the stock for the spindles, handy or not or whether you have to order it on top of that five hundred dollars you're probably going to spend another 200 to 250 in parts alone um just to be aware of what you're getting into also this has the the ball cranks for this originally came from enco which doesn't exist anymore but there are drawings for the size you can order them somewhere and make your own handles or whatever you want but my problem with these drawings is they're a little wonky so there's like this diameter is given as a radius, not a huge thing. This is the first pot we're making, and you can see there is no size callouts for these holes. There's also, they're obviously elongated, there are no uh, length callouts for there, and I'm assuming it's 200 thousandths off of this face here to the edge of that hole, not the center of where you would stop. So, so it's just it's a little weird there. So I actually had to go to the mating pieces on this to find out that those are for quarter inch. 20 screws which I up to 5 16 just because the part that is holding on is rather chunky and I you know I can stick a 5 16 screw in there and it's not gonna hurt anything in the system also on this banjo here there's no size call out for this diameter here so you kind of got to go to your mating part and figure out how this fits on the mating part just from the drawings there's no instructions to this and you know kind of figure it out from there so there's a lot of i'm gonna have to go through each one individually and make sure i got all the measurements i need and then just to show you another thing this is for one of the dovetailed slides and i don't know if all the measurements are on here i'm assuming they are but you know it's it's a little busy you know uh view wise but i mean it's readable so I just have to go through and confirm measurements with mating pieces to make sure I have all the measurements. I just want to let you guys know ahead of time, just from, you know, just to know what you're getting into. I'm going to try to work something with these plans. Uh, it may or may not come to fruition, but I, I, I am trying to do something to make these a little bit more readable. We'll see how that works out in the future. Anyway, so that's kind of the overview of this kit. So why don't we go ahead and uh, start making our first pot, pot for this.